Hi, this is Ushio, and welcome back to Angels with Scaly Wings. We are working our way through a Solitary Mind mod, and so far it's going pretty well. We've gone through the underground maze, and yeah, we succeeded. And I think that gives us special access to certain routes, which we're going to find out as we proceed to the next chapter. Here we go. Here we are, we're back at base. I've taken the route so Bryce and Sebastian don't get killed. So that's what I've chosen to do. I'll skip all this though. This takes forever to get through. Skip ahead. There we go. Let's meet with Naomi. How's it going? Following Naomi's invitation, I made my way to the Newtown area. The several tall glass and concrete buildings towering high above everything were in the stark contrast with the generally smaller, mostly wooden houses one could find in the older parts. It certainly surprised me how deserted the streets were. For about five to ten minutes, I hadn't seen a single dragon pass by. Sebastian remained close by as always, keeping an eye out for possible trouble. Naomi gracefully glided around one of the buildings and soon landed in front of me. There you are. It's kind of an, a weird place to meet, to be honest. I know. Though, it's next to the venue I wanted to invite you to. Why not just go there instead? Its location's kind of a little tricky to explain, since several roads are still under construction. Besides, it would ruin the surprise. You and your surprises. This one's good and not explosive, I promise. Suddenly, a voice behind me called out. Hold on a sec, what sort of explosive surprise did you run into during your last meeting? Don't tell me you found an old explosive device. Um, I mean, yeah, we totally didn't. It wasn't anything dangerous, right? It, it was fireworks? Yeah. <laughs> it's such a bad lie. I don't remember seeing or hearing any of that day. I ordered a private performance just for us two. You know, I can afford it. Naomi, issue, just between us and without any protocols, what actually happened? Uh, it's a long story. Let me explain. Okay, in short, we discovered an ancient sunken facility. It was pretty crazy, it blew up, it flooded, and yeah. Everything okay? I just caught myself before nodding off. Yeah, it took a long time to explain this. Oh, sorry, I didn't get enough sleep last night. I guess the recent excitement must have kept your mind awake too. Speaking of which, anyway, we discovered this ancient sunken facility, explored it for a while, found some stuff, but then its generator was about to blow up due to seawater that we let in by accident, and but thankfully we managed to find a solution in time. Wow. I think we better not tell Bryce. Yeah, he wouldn't take kindly to endangering the ambassador of humanity for no good reason. And he'd never let me anywhere near Ushio again. Exactly what I was thinking, yeah. Look, she didn't put me at risk by any means. I wanted to explore the old facility, and she had to follow to protect me, which she did. I wouldn't have made it out alive without her help. I could have stopped you, but did you have the authority to do so? None of us do. Maybe Bryce? Exactly, see? Okay, I'll keep it a secret. Just be safe and have fun, okay? Thanks, dude. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, Sebastian is off. Anyway, I hope you like what I've got planned. It's located just a few minutes on foot from here. Makes me wonder what you've got, though. You'll see in just a moment. Naomi led me through a couple narrow deserted streets and inner yards toward a large yet relatively low grey building with numerous tall windows and several sets of double glass doors. We walked through a large atrium and toward the reception desk. A lone grey runner dragon was happily enjoying his nap time on the large computer chair. Hesitantly, Naomi knocked on the table. In an instant, he assumed a proper sitting position and turned to face us as if nothing had happened. Yo, hello and welcome to our establishment. My name is Rain, how can I help? That's not what your badge says. It's a long story. Let's say that my parents are funny people. Okay, good evening. I made an arrangement earlier. It's Naomi. One sec. Oh yeah, I see it. Order place this morning. Your payment has been processed and everything looks good. Section 2, West Wing. Allow me to escort you. That'd be great, thank you. We made our way through a series of corridors and staircases until we stopped in front of a simple wooden door. The receptionist produced a plastic keycard out of his pocket, pressed it against the reader on the nearby wall and pulled the handle down. Okay, what have we got? Oh wow. 
The showers can be found past the door over there. If you've got any problems or questions, please don't hesitate to contact her reception desk. Have a good evening. He handed the keycard to Naomi and quickly left the room. Looks like we got a private pool or something. Is it just the two of us? Yeah, I rented out the whole thing until the morning. So, it's a pool party. Told you, this one's going to be safe and relaxing. She does like her water though, doesn't she? Still, I better make sure there are no generators in proximity about to blow up. Quiet, you. I'm just joking. Yeah, I know. The walkways are kind of narrow, though. Is that a problem? No way I can fit there without risk of slipping. Oh well, I don't need showers or a ladder anyway, so we're fine. I can't go swimming in my clothes, though. I'll just take them off. That escalated it quickly. Oh well, I didn't mean it that way. Of course, I remember what you said about human traditions related to clothing, so I got you another wetsuit. Why didn't you tell me to bring the one you bought earlier? It would have ruined the surprise. Okay, that's a good point. Naomi pulled out a small plastic bag from her belt bag and handed it to me. Since we weren't at sea anymore, I didn't need a full costume and just settled for a much lighter outfit. Meanwhile, the dragoness dropped her bag on the floor and happily jumped into the water. I expected a huge splash, but her entry was surprisingly smooth. She swam a few quick laps around the perimeter and then stopped at the corner opposite from the panoramic windows. Propping her back up against both walls, she leaned back and relaxed in the shallow end. Done with changing clothes, I soon joined her in the pool. Are you enjoying yourself? Yeah, naturally. Clean, warm water, a quiet evening, good company. After all the recent craziness, what's there not to like? Yeah, a moment to take a breather for us both. Should have brought us some drinks though, but I'm a little wary of alcohol. Bryce drinks way too much for his own good, and in a way, I'm rather afraid to end up like him. Part of me wants to tell him to look after himself better and cut down on the alcohol, but I can't bring myself to invade his personal life with unsolicited advice. Nothing stops you from doing so. You are friends, and it's natural that you'd be concerned about his well-being. Yeah, but he hasn't really changed, despite the time spent in the local bar, and maybe it's just not my business. He does what he does to cope with the stress. Still, you could speak up. I'll think about it. Yeah, so there's been some crazy stuff in the main story. There was a couple of, like, uh, bomb attempts and stuff like this, so... The main story is running in the background between these meetings with Naomi. And yeah, we're quite close to everything coming to a head. So everything is a little bit hectic right now. But for now, it's just you and me here. And I'd rather focus on the pleasant stuff. Sounds like a fine idea. I'm glad that we share the sentiment. Though I'm surprised you haven't invited anybody else to join us. Mm, I thought about it, but this meeting is sort of an apology to you for what happened during our last get together. And since I honestly don't know how well you get along with others, I decided against taking any risks of ruining it. Hey, all good here. Besides, the pool is certainly too small for more than two people. Yeah. Naomi beckoned me to come closer, which I did, swimming up to her side. She unfolded her wing and gently pressed it against my back, giving it some extra support. So what do we do? Back off, rest at her side? Uh, let's reciprocate. Naomi leaned in closer as well. Just hanging out, poolside. Chilling out. The evening sky is quite beautiful today, isn't it? Yeah, I really like the view and the atmosphere of this place. On the way here, I was a little bit nervous to be honest. I had some doubts about the penthouse section being the right choice for our meeting, but I'm happy that you're enjoying it. Why wouldn't I? It might feel a little too open, and you humans seem to be pretty secretive. Considering how many dragons have wings, it could make you uncomfortable. Oh, now that you mention it. Don't worry, the glass is almost completely opaque from anyone outside. They won't be able to see. Good to hear. Peace and quiet. It reminds me of how things used to be during university, and before it. I miss the simpler times when grass used to be greener, the sun was brighter, and I wasn't well acquainted with every crime this town has seen for the past few years. Being young and naive is such an adorable little example of blissful ignorance. But you can't keep it up forever. True, sooner or later I was bound to crash into reality. Your encounter with it wasn't too bad though, thankfully. Yeah. A rich family and supportive friends give you many luxuries that other people lack. But you know why I joined the police? To help people and make a difference, right? 
there's a huge reason behind my motives that has little to do with being a bleeding heart do-gooder. I'm not sure how to put it, you might think of it as an egoistic or selfish thing, but you deserve to see the full picture. For most of my life, I was nothing but a pretty face from a family with a large bank account. Beyond that, I was alone. Shallow friendships I formed at university crumbled into dust soon after it ended. I never formed any lasting bonds in my earlier years, and only have my lack of social skills and drive to blame for it. You seem to be pretty good at keeping conversations now, though. Months and months of practice at the department. You should have seen me during my first few weeks. Before I joined, I was different. I was a nobody for every person in this town, but I wanted to be noticed, and to be liked. To be remembered, maybe. And I sought to achieve it by myself, through my own skills and merits, not family money. And so you started the journey to find your place, right? You're aware how bumpy it was. Still, I wouldn't call you selfish. You wanted to make friends by being nice to people and by helping them in some way. It's completely natural. Thanks for understanding. Things could have been better, of course, but for now, I'm content with my position and I'm proud to be friends with wonderful people at the department. And with you. I bet a lot of dragons would have been happy to meet a human, let alone have a pool party with them. That's, yeah, also true. I never was a big fan of the human mythos, personally, but to be honest, an alien from another world is no less exciting. We aren't alone in the universe, after all. Come to think of it, let me run downstairs real quick and grab a few things. Our party feels a little bit dry. I'd say it's anything but, considering we're in a pool. Good one, okay. I'll be back in a sec. Naomi carefully made her way around me and paddled over to the edge. She easily climbed out of the water without using the ladder and soon walked out of the room. Okay, just going to wait a couple of seconds. Left to my own devices, I made a few laps before returning to dry land where I took a vacant lounge chair. No matter how hard I tried to keep dark memories at bay, my thoughts travelled back to recent events and their possible future consequences. I could only wonder what was going to happen next. So many different scenarios went by through my mind. Success, failure, diplomatic fallout, people back home, people here, behind the scenes games, the incoming destruction. There's a lot going on. Are you okay? Oh, sorry, I got lost in my thoughts. I saw a dark bottle on the floor nearby, as well as several paper bags. Naomi must have paid a visit to the local bar of some sort. I see I'm not the only one. What's, what's the problem? I don't want to bring the stuff up during our evening out, okay? No, it's okay. Better get it off your chest now. You don't have to hide your worries behind any masks. Please be honest. Fine. I trailed off for a moment. It's about Reza, isn't it? I can't say I completely push aside my thoughts about his case either. Too much is at stake. The very cooperation between our worlds is in peril, and many more lives. I know. There's something I'm not sure how well you will take, but... How can I put it more simply? It appears that Reza has not gone rogue of his own accord. His actions are too methodical for a scared biochemist who had to improvise. Of course, his performance is sloppy at times. It's to be expected from a lone person conducting a military-level operation for all intents and purposes. Reza had to receive instructions earlier from a competent specialist, and he had a perfect opportunity to do so thanks to the lemon letters, as Mav called them, similar to the ones he used to invite you to the portal. Nobody ever told me about the secret messages. Obviously not. Your superiors would have kept you on a need-to-know basis when providing information. And on our side, Bryce says Maverick had no proof, so we couldn't add it to the case file. However, he shared his findings with me unofficially, and they check out with other events. I'm also questioning the amount of ammo your colleague carries. Way too much for self-defense purposes. I had the same thoughts. He's not the type of person to endanger his mission of helping humanity for any personal gain. There has to be more to it. Which seems to be correct. But can I ask you a favour? Don't relay those conclusions to anyone, else the Council might consider Reza's actions as an act of war. The consequences would be absolutely devastating for any and all of my efforts to bring our worlds together. For those back in the city, it would mean certain doom. This is why I'm telling you now in private. You deserve to know the truth, no matter how painful it might be, and I trust you'll be able to make the right decision based on it. Legally, I'd be obligated to officially report such findings and theories, but for the sake of your people and you personally, I'm taking the risk. Thanks. That's the least I can do for you saving my tail back at the facility. You're a reliable person, but I can't say the same about the politicians on both sides. 
Aren't you concerned about your police work integrity? Not so much. I serve them to make the lives of people better, not to be a cog in the legal machine, and rule books are secondary to me. It's quite a dangerous line of thought for an officer. I wouldn't dismiss them completely. Many rules exist for good reason. Besides, for every risky action I take, I always carefully weigh the consequences of each choice. I can be biased or wrong, but the resulting outcome is purely my responsibility. So if someone asks me why I've done something or another, I can lay out my arguments, be they correct or otherwise, rather than citing an arbitrary list, shrugging and walking away. You sound a little bit like Maverick here. Oh, do I? Not as extreme though. For a moment I was worried. No need to, you're too nice to be like him. I sure hope so. But this whole talk has made me nervous about your return to the human world. If Reza succeeds in his mission, your rulers wouldn't have to make an uncomfortable witness. If we apprehend and convict him, they wouldn't take kindly to someone who played a crucial role in foiling their plans. But I can't just stay here and abandon everyone back home. They need generators, you said it on many occasions. They don't need you in person. I'm sorry if it sounds harsh. I can't risk jeopardising the diplomatic relations. They expect me to report back, and if I don't, who knows what sort of political crisis it would result in. We don't have a full picture yet, but when I return and take a look around, it'll be easier to figure out my next move. There's not going to be a next move. They're going to drop a stone on your head and call it an accident. Don't you understand that those people will step over as many dead bodies as necessary to reach their goals? Sorry, you are a good friend, and I care about your safety and well-being. I appreciate that, but you shouldn't assume the worst immediately. We don't know for sure if there's some sort of conspiracy to begin with, right? Yet everything heavily implies it. I know you care deeply about both us and humanity, else you wouldn't be here. Just like you, I value all life, and I'd be happy to see the trade go through unhindered. Arrange the generator transfer, add a lemon letter if you want to make sure they understand it's from you, but please, stay. If I don't do what they expect of me, there will be consequences. They get the power sources your people need so badly to support the city, isn't that the goal? What about lasting cooperation between the species? They might think you're holding me hostage or something. I'll trust you to be able to sort it out. Perhaps a simple video message would suffice. At worst, they can strip you of your status and send someone else to handle the affairs, so our officials would take away your apartment and funding. However, I'd be more than happy to share mine. Here, you are safe. But back at home, who knows what dirty games and dangerous plots await you. Thanks for the offer. How about this? We catch Reza, and from there, I'm sure we can decide what to do next. Sounds good. I can't wait to see what his interrogation is going to turn up. Speaking of recent events, the generator we recovered turned out to be a huge boon for the engineering department. I hope they'll be able to put it to good use. They didn't provide me with a lot of details, but they said the possibilities for technological discoveries are very promising. There's a little formality that we need to settle though. Okay, what's that? You're the one who recovered it, and since the original owners and developers are lost to history, it belongs to you. There's a form they need you to fill out to file your claim. Needless to say, the council is very excited about the discovery, and they want to know whom to reward for it. How are we going to explain where we got it from? If we tell the truth, you might get fired. I thought about it and couldn't come up with anything. I was hoping you had some ideas. Nope. Also, I'm not acting as an independent individual, but as an ambassador for humankind, or rather, a very specific city-state, so it would belong to them, technically. That's going to complicate it even further, isn't it? Right. Maybe you should file the claim. Bryce would still be worried about you exploring something dangerous and ancient, but at least they wouldn't blame you for endangering foreign diplomats. And rob you of all the credit. It's better than getting you in trouble, yeah? I guess. But it doesn't feel right. Don't worry about it. We know the truth. That's good enough. Okay then. Now, let's try and enjoy our evening. I forgot to ask, what did you bring along? A bottle of fruit wine, seafood, and some snacks. Where did you get these? There's a bar just down the road. I learned about it while processing some papers for a minor theft incident three weeks ago. Now that's a new way of keeping track of local establishments. Stress aside, police work has a few unexpected perks. We don't have any cups though. Check one of the paper bags. 
Yeah, they are. Okay, we got some cups. I went with plastic. I apologise if they look cheap, but I didn't want to drop one and leave glass shards around the swimming pool. I'm surprised they let you take a bottle inside here. Wow, our receptionist is kind of asleep, so he didn't worry about it. Got it. Do we have a corkscrew? The bartender was kind enough to open the wine for us. How nice. Naomi grabbed a large bowl, while I stuck to a smaller average sized cup. Unsurprisingly, our vessels combined were enough to empty out the bottle. I thought you were wary of drinking. I am. But that is a lot of wine. I'm also four to five times your size. Point taken. What are we drinking to? Maybe you should choose. You're the host, you get to go. Okay then. She took a short pause. To our meeting. To our meeting. True to its name, the drink had a light fruity taste with a very minor alcohol flavour. Both of us emptied roughly half our respective vessels. A decent taste. Almost like juice. We wouldn't want to get too tipsy. I've got work tomorrow and you're probably going to be busy as well. But hangover at work is so much fun. Not with my duties, it's not. And most certainly not with something as important as yours. It's not like it would endanger the political relations between our two worlds or something, right? Of course not. The snacks weren't anything huge, but they had a fine taste and helped quell the peckish sensation in my stomach. After some time, I picked up my cup again. My turn now. Go ahead. Friendship, happiness to you. Uh, good health is the standard. Let's go. Oh, good luck and success. Let's do this one. To all our future victories. Sounds good. I hope all the recent craziness and chaos will be resolved soon. So do I. I took another long sip of my drink, mindful to keep enough for it for at least one final round. Our cups are almost drier. Maybe we should get the final one out of the way. What do you say? Sure. Only a few days ago, we met at the production facility, but somehow I trust you almost completely, as if we'd known each other for many long years. I wish the circumstances were different, and your stay in our world was a lot more pleasant with less stress. But despite all odds, you remained a faithful, reliable friend, and I thank you for that. To you. Wow, that was impressive. Thanks. I was thinking about what to tell you this whole evening. I'd say you did pretty well. Soon, my cup and Naomi's bowl were empty, and we stuffed them back into now much lighter paper bags. I leaned back in my lounge chair, while the dragoness chose to settle on the tiled floor. Outside, the sun had almost completely sunken beneath the horizon, but still gave the clouds a faint red hue. Do you want to go for another swim? Is it safe? I mean, we just drank and had food. Muscle or stomach cramps are pretty dangerous in the water. Don't overstrain yourself, and if anything happens, I'll get you out. What about you? I'm not susceptible to them the same way that you and some land dragons are. She walked up to the pool's edge and lazily slipped into the water, making little to no splash. I followed suit, albeit my entry was much less graceful. For a time, we enjoyed splashy, slowly swimming, or simply relaxing on the shallow part. Eventually, exhaustion caught up with me, and I decided to make my way back. Naomi climbed out of the water as well, droplets freely rolling off her scales. A tired yawn escaped my lips. It's getting late. I doubt I can return to my apartment now. This place is all ours until morning. Where am I going to sleep though? I guess one of the lounge chairs will have to do. I leaned back into my spacious improvised bed and yawned again. It made a fine place to get some rest, albeit missing a few essential elements. The odd shape took some getting used to. How is it? I mean, could use a blanket. Go on. I could help you. The dragoness lay down on her chest right next to me and unfolded her wing, easily covering me completely. Is that better? Yeah, thanks. Good night. It's the next day. In the morning, we were woken up by the persistent knocking on the door. The pool was about to open in one hour, and our booking was soon to come to an end. Slowly and drowsily, I climbed out of the lounge chair. Naomi was already up and about, her energetic attitude in stark contrast with my slow half-asleep movement. We went for a quick shower, picked up all the trash and leftovers from yesterday and left the building. On our way out, we thanked the receptionist for his help. Naomi left him a tip, and we walked through the exit. That was fun. I'm looking forward to our next get-together. So am I. Any idea what it's going to be? Not right now. Maybe later, once I sort out some official papers. But we could go see the big fireworks on festival day, right? It's quite the spectacle. 
I can't make any promises yet, but I'm going to try and be there. Sure, Ambassador's duties always come first. We both know it. I've got to head to work for now. Only an hour left before my shift starts, and I'm yet to have my breakfast. You probably have quite a busy schedule as well, right? Yeah. Alright, cool. I'll see you later. See ya. Okay, so that was our fourth meeting with Naomi. So, I think that the next chapter is probably going to be chapter 5, which is the fireworks. Reza shows up with the gun and all the crazy things happen and we start hitting these endings. I think there are five endings to this mod, so we'll just have to see how we go. But for now, this is Usho signing off and hopefully I will see you next time.